much better effort in the second half. Uh, I thought we did a good job really setting the tone defensively uh, in the second half. I thought we got good energy uh, in the first half when we subbed Armani Moore in the game. I thought he came in, played with some passion and heart, which he normally does that all the time. And I thought it gave us what we needed uh, to get over that mental hump. Uh, and then we just carried that into the locker room, on into the second half. And I thought our guys did a tremendous job of really competing, battling, uh, taking away those three-point shots in the second half. But we didn't come to play early in the first half. Uh, I'm not sure it was the folks. I thought a couple guys just weren't locked in out the gates. Uh, so a good thing we bounced back. But also another good job of taking care of the basketball, uh, offensive rebounding, uh, doing a good job moving the ball and getting the ball inside. I mean, I think sometimes it is what it is. Uh, you know, just getting guys moving, cutting, getting into a better flow. We also, look at warm up, whatever the case may be. Uh, and, I, and I never like to think you, you don't you don't take your opponent seriously. So I don't, I don't think that's the case. I just think uh, you know, stretching, layups, getting loose, and getting off to a good start. Really, I mean, but again, teams present different things: uh, running, jump, trap, zone, whatever, whatever the case may be. I just you know, no excuse for it. you. Got to always be locked in, and ready to go. Poor defense. No, poor defense, that's all. I mean, because they like to shoot a lot of threes. I think we played on our heels uh, early in the game. More, nothing but poor defense. Is that kind of a head-scratch for you? I know coming out of the college, you really kind of felt in the street. You know, we, we probably had two of our best practices uh, the last two days. Uh, but again, it just, I mean, <laughs> some things happen. They're hard to explain. but. They made shots. Uh, I don't think we did a very good job of being in the ball screen, taking the guy to the ball screen. We allowed that point guard to turn down a, a couple ball screens as opposed to our point guard taking them to the action. So when he turned it down, we call it the drift pass where he gets all the way at the rim and throws it out. And we did a poor job of staying with our guys on the drift pass. And, do, and again, did a better job, much better job in all aspects in, in the second half. He was late. He was late. L-A-T-E, he was late. Uh, yes, yeah. Coming to the game was late, bottom line. Uh, no character or anything. Jerron's a great kid, but he was late getting to the game, bottom line. Yeah. Collins, I'm going to talk about the play of Josh Richardson. It seems like sometimes he's forgotten about, you know, but he's always steady and he was against the night. The thing about Josh, he's a, he's a good all-around player. Uh, I guess you would call him a glue guy. He's solid in both aspects, on both ends of the floor. And the thing he has to continue to grow into is uh, being assertive offensively and looking for his offense. And he, it's one of those deals where you need a shot or you know, you're know down or the floor of the game isn't where it needs to be, and all of a sudden Josh makes a play. Uh, and for me, I talked to him about being an instinctive scorer, being aggressive, and looking for his offense. And he's getting better because he's improved his three-point shot. He made one tonight, so he's worked on that a tremendous amount of uh, shots and hours. So that is there, but again, a guy that understands his role, wouldn't accept his role, whatever the team needs us to do to win. He guards the other team's best player. And like I said, he was good defensively, so it wasn't, wasn't the case early in the first half. He wasn't one of those guys. Um, but again, just, just growing into that role and, and being a very aggressive scorer, and it takes time, and it just has to be who you are. He's doing a good job, but, but he's aggressive. When Jordan L is aggressive, uh, he plays well. And whether he's making or missing shots, when he's aggressive, he's active, he's attacking the rim. And is assertive. Uh, he normally has success. Well, the, the thing, the thing we try to, you know, well, not try to, but do as a staff, we, we continue to work with guys, even the guys that don't get in the game. We spend hours skill work, continue to get better because you never know where your numbers call, uh, and you got to be ready for that opportunity. He was the one guy. Uh, we knew as a staff, it's just a matter of time. I think more than anything, just his offense, uh, you know, making layups around the rim. Because when you have him, Jerron, and Jordan L out there at the same time, teams have a tendency to sag in the lane and make it tough on your offense. You're not able to flow at the level you need to. But, but he spent hours working on his shot, attacking the rim, making his layups. And then when he's making his free throws, he has to be on the floor. Because he's a guy that brings a level of toughness to our team, energy, passion. He plays hard. And, that's, and that was the one guy, when guys aren't playing, for me as a coach, and we said all the time to staff, we got to figure out a way to get our mind in the floor because of what he brings to the table. You saw that tonight. But to his credit, he stays ready. He continues to work on his game. He doesn't mope about it. And he capitalizes on his opportunity. Coach, you mentioned uh, earlier that like, Antonio Barton wasn't doing some things because he was still kind of getting 
big over the lake. Did we see some of those things today, the drives? Oh, yeah, and he's a guy, he's really improved his drive. Because, again, when we saw him at Memphis, we, we, we felt like he's a really good catch and shoot guy, one or two dribble pull up. So, for us as a staff, the next phase we thought for his game was driving the ball, getting in the lane, because everybody respected his shot. And he's done a good job really driving the ball. But there was a couple of times in the second half I thought he passed up three point shots. And I just said, now you got the shot, you still have to take it. Uh, and he knocked his next one down because that's what he does. He makes shots, but he's improved that, that part of his game. And his leg is getting strong, so that's probably why you see the, the ability to get in the lane and drive it now. Oh, I, like, I like where we are offensively. But, but again, I got to tell the guys, teams you know, have a tendency to, to sag and migrate around Jerron and Jarnell. And the thing we talked about is initially getting the ball inside. But if they're sagging so far, you have to be able to take that shot. You know, I mean, you have to take it. If it's not falling, it's not falling. But you, but you have to step into that shot. Like, for example, when I tell Josh, you got to step into your shot with confidence. It's kind of shoot it like it's a free throw, like, should I shoot it? He has to be aggressive. But when teams pass, you can't pass up open looks. I don't care what happens. Uh, you got to be ready to shoot the basketball. Because he spent so much time on it, but 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 again, even though he's improved his three-point shots, he's more of a slashing guy off the dribble, one or two dribble pull-ups in the lane. Uh, but he has to be consistent on the shot. Um, I, you know, I talked to you know the three teams we played in the Bahamas and just what do they thought about a team, things we need to do, how how would you approach, what was your game plan going against Tennessee? And the gist of it really was, we don't want those big guys to beat us around the rim. Uh, make your guards beat us from the perimeter. And that's the biggest game. Really, ultimately, making shots. And I think that's what sums up. And again, I tell our guys, when you have a shot, you have to take it. No, for, in his case, that's, that's parenting, bloodlines, dad, coach. I mean, I, I don't have anything to do with that. I mean, just a guy that knows how to play the game. I mean, I, I can't take credit for that. He just, he just has a feel for the game and a pace to the game. Right? I guess the credit goes to his mom and dad on that one. Well, you know, for me, I tell him to be aggressive. Every time there's a shot, I don't, I don't care what the shot clock says, be aggressive. Because he's a guy that can score the ball. It's just a matter of getting into the flow. Um, we have options, other options out there, guys that can score the ball. Just getting into the flow, getting the feel for it, the pace of it. That's all it is. But for me, it's more me telling him to stay aggressive. Look for your shot. Be an attack mode. Attack off the dribble. But then when that happens, obviously he has a reputation. People understand who he is. But yeah, I mean, it, it'll come. It's just about him, you know, staying aggressive, continue to work on his game. It'll fall in line for him. Coach, A.J. Davis was very active today. Can you speak to how big would be getting some contribution from him in the future? Well, I think it's very helpful. Because you're talking about a young guy, that, you know, 6'9". He picked up, you know, 15 pounds this summer. But the guy's always been a perimeter guy, played on the perimeter. He's been around the post a little bit, but always a perimeter guy. And now it's somebody I'm banging against bigger guys, physical guys. Not that he can't do it, but it's tough. I mean, I don't care. Any freshman coming in and gets older guys, physical guys, regardless of what level, it's not easy. But, he, but he's kept his composure, and he's, he competes, he battles, he's not afraid of the challenge. And that's why he'll be very successful as a basketball player, because his ability eventually be able to play on the perimeter as well as play inside. Well, I think part of it, you watch our guys, um, in most cases, when you get on a certain stage, they, they understand the level. So all of a sudden, you zoomed in the start of a game. Uh, and those guys will be locked in, ready to go.